Hey folks, welcome back. Kind of a gloomy day here in central Ontario, Canada. It is raining off and on, but one of the good things about it raining off and on and the weather being a bit cooler, the bugs tend to tend to settle down a little bit. I'm going to hide out inside the shed here today just in case that rain does kick off again. I've got a white pine log section of it anyways that we're going to cut up. I need some inch and a half boards. That's a perfect candidate for it. And so we'll get that 350-38, the Clark Sawmill here fired up. And uh, in addition to that, we're also going to fire up the Micron Computer Setworks. This thing here, you may have seen in several of my videos, but you may have missed the ones where I talked about the installation of that and why I like using it and more or less what all the buttons do. Go back and check out those videos if you're interested. Today you'll see how I use that to take away the calculations. I don't have to do any math when I'm cutting boards. I more or less turn it on, set the thickness I need, and I just controlled the down and the back. This controls the up and down. You'll see why I like that and how that can work not only on my sawmill, but any sawmill for that matter. Here we go. All right, let's tension this blade first and foremost, and we're going up to 800 PSI. And it doesn't take much here. Then we'll lock it in 800 PSI, and then we'll fire things up.
All right, I shut things down just for a minute to tell you what I'm going to do next. This is where I start to use the setworks. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to square up a cant in order to make uh, the setworks worthwhile. You can start with a log just like this, and I might do that if I was going to take a log and just slab it all the way down. More or less what you do is the same process. You get the material up there, in my case a cant, and when you take the last cutoff, which will be in my case bark, uh, you press a button called the Remember Me button, and that's more or less a reference point button. And so assuming that blade was down there at the height you just cut, you press that Remember Me or Reference button, and then you're telling the setworks from that starting point, I want you to cut X dimension or X distance from that point downwards. In my case, it's going to be inch and a half. And so I'm going to go plug that into the setworks in just a minute. But before I do that, I'd have to tell the sawmill to start from this point. So I'd have to bring the saw head back up here with the blade at the top and then drop down inch and a half, which will plug into the setworks. And so if we make our way back here, this is the setworks. And if we turn it on underneath, the first thing you're going to notice is you get a display with a red number here. This says 7 and 7 30 seconds. Now this is more or less what the height from the saw bed up to the bottom turn on the on the tooth is and so we have teeth and the teeth some go up some go down and that creates a curve more or less a, an amount that's being taken out of the wood by the blade thickness that distance from the bed up to that bottom tooth is this right here now if this is not accurate you can change that and it's actually quite easy to change that what you do in this case you see this button you hold it down for two seconds and now you can plug it in. And so I'd take a tape measure and I'd measure that distance. In my case, I know that was accurate, so I'll just plug it back in. There's seven, seven, 30 seconds, enter. All right, it just tells me, yep, I got it. And you can see it matches the scale up there. Now this is kind of uh, interesting because uh, this is a lot more accurate than the scale is. If I look at that, that pretty much says like, seven and I don't know a quarter that's about as close as I can get there maybe an eighth but uh, this is even more accurate now at this point what I would do I'd start the sawmill take that saw blade put it back where that finished cut was last in this case I think it's like 10 something and then I'll come back up here and I'll press that remember button or reference button this one right here and that'll tell the set works from that point cut downwards whatever dimension I plug in. In just a minute, I'll fire things back up. I'll press that button once the saw head is in place, and then I'll type in inch and a half, and that'll be in green numbers up here, inch and a half. And then more or less how the process is gonna work with the sawmill fired up is I go down. Oh, that's a leftover hydraulic pressure. I go down, I'm making the cut, I control it, I can stop it at any point. Once I'm done the cut, I can bring it back and I'm bringing back obviously uh, whatever I cut and then I get back to this position here the saw head is at the height I just made all I have to do is press enter and it's going to automatically drop it down inch and a half plus the thickness of the curve down again and go make the cut bring it back this time I just press enter it's going to drop down I make the cut bring it back press enter and so it's down back enter down back enter and that'll go right down to the bottom of the uh, of the cant and uh, that's kind of nice it's something that really speeds things up and it takes away any source of error that's for sure
Well, that's it. We got some nice lumber made. I'm going to keep at her here. The great thing about making nice lumber is that you're never short on building supplies. And the other nice thing about lumber like this, look how straight that is. That blade is cutting excellent. It's making for great dimensions. So that's going to do it for me here today. I certainly enjoy myself out here when I'm sawing. Who can't with a machine like this? This takes uh, sawing and turns it up a notch, that's for sure. I'm going to keep at her, as I said. I've got lots more to do. If you have any questions at all about my Clark Sawmill, my 35038, or the Micron Setworks, be sure to put it down below. Maybe you've got one of these as well, and you've got it on a different sawmill. I'd like to hear how that's working out. I know this is uh, pretty universal. You can put it on a hydraulic sawmill. You can put it on a manual sawmill. You can put it on a fully electric sawmill. You could put it on any sawmill. So I'd like to hear how that's going in different applications. I'll have videos for this at the end of this video as well. If you wanted to see the sawmill all the way from day one to what you see before you, be sure to check that out. As always, if you did like this video to keep my videos going, please give this video the like a -roo. That's a lot of videos. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.